All right, in this lesson, we are going to go over the adjusting journal entries that we learned in this section. So we're gonna give you an example and then walk you through that example. So if you're ready, let's get started here. In our first journal entry, assume that it is February 20X2, so the second year of a company, and we have our prompt here, and it says that company A purchased insurance on December 1st, 20X1 for a six month period starting on December 1st, 20X1, at a cost of $4,170. So we've got insurance that we bought for $4,170, and it's supposed to last us for six months. Adjustment for insurance expense is made at the end of each month. So we prepaid the insurance, and then each month we're going to uh, expense the portion that we used in that month of insurance. Prepare the adjusting entry as of February 28th, 20X2, for the in insurance incurred during February. So in this case here, we gotta do a couple of things. The first thing that we've gotta do is we gotta figure out what was the original book of entry? And that would have been the entry in the exchange of the cash on December 1st of 20X1. Then when we need to do, once we've done that, we've got to calculate how much expense did we actually incur for the month of February and then book the expense for that. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that original book of entry. So on December 1st, we exchanged cash for insurance. Now insurance is not a product, so we didn't really get insurance on that day. What we're getting is a service, basically. We're getting the service of six months of insurance protection. So if something goes wrong, the insurance company is gonna have to pay us out to kind of make us whole again. So to do that, we exchanged cash, so we gave up cash in exchange for not insurance expense, but in this case, prepaid insurance. Why prepaid? Because we prepaid it as time goes on on, then we incur the insurance expense. So uh, our journal entry would be a debit to prepaid ex uh, insurance. And you can put insurance expense if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it as prepaid insurance. And then we're gonna credit cash. And we're gonna do this for $4,170. Okay, so that's the original book of entry. That's not an adjusting entry. Remember that an adjusting entry does not involve cash. From here, then we gotta figure out how much insurance has been incurred in the month of February. Now, unless you're told otherwise, you basically use the numbers there to figure out how much you've used. So in this case, uh, we are told that it's costing us $4,170 for six months. And uh, if we were to try to figure out how much one month costs, we can divide $4,170 divided by six. So if I did $4,170 divided by six, I should get 695. So the assumption here is one month has gone by, therefore we use $695 of insurance. Now I know some people might go, well, February is a short month versus everything else. Well, materiality would tell us that um, it's not as material. So this one or two days extra isn't material to the whole scope of the financial statement. What do we mean by material? Well, if you're just a poor college student, if you lost a hundred bucks, would you care? Well, obviously, yeah, you would care because that's a hundred bucks and a college student who might be uh, poor, that is a, I mean, that's a meal for like two weeks, right? Well, what about if you were a millionaire? Well, the millionaire, if they lost 100 bucks, probably not the biggest of deal. And so that's what materiality says, is that at what point is it insignificant that it really doesn't matter? So for a millionaire, losing that 100 bucks doesn't really matter. In this case, the one or two days doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. So if you're thinking, well, aren't we supposed to divide it by how many days are in uh, six months. Sure, you could do that, but let's make it easy here. And if they've told us that each mo uh, six month period is 4,170, we can kind of just divide it by six to get 695. All right, so then what would our adjusting journal entry be? So at the end of February, we've got to do an adjusting journal entry. Well, we incurred an expense, so we're going to increase the expense. Increases in expenses are a debit, so we're going to increase the insurance expense and we are going to do that for 695 and then we have to take it out of somewhere where we're going to take it out we're going to take it out of the prepaid insurance not cash because we already paid it 
So we're gonna credit prepaid insurance. And that is our answer. So that's the adjusting entry that we learned in this section uh, when it comes to prepaying and expense. All right, moving on to the second example here. On November 1st, uh, Company A accepted a contract to provide services to Spirit Systems, or yeah, Spirit Systems. The term of the agreement requires Company A to perform services between January 10th through February 18th, which equals 40 days of work. The payment terms state that the payment is due within 30 days after the last day of work, which would be March 20th. So 30 days after the work has been completed would get us to March 20th. That's when the payment is due. The contract is stated to pay $11,600. All revenues are booked on a monthly basis. Prepare the adjusting entry for revenues earned in February. So uh, in this case, Cash wasn't paid to us up front. We earn on a per day basis. And we can see that because it's been emphasized that the first day of work is here and the 40th day is um, here, okay? Uh, so the question is, is we are at the end of February. We need to book February's revenue. We've earned it, but we haven't been paid for it. So how many days have we earned? Well, we've earned 18 days, February 1 through February 18. So if we counted those out, we read 18 days. So how could we solve this? Well, the first thing that we would need to solve is how much do we earn per day from providing the service to the customer? Well, we know that the timeline is 40 days and we know that we earn $11,600. So I can take 11,600 and divide it by 40 and that would pinpoint us at $290 a day. So every day that we are uh, providing a service to this client, Spirit Systems, we're making $290 a day. All right, so we've got $290 a day, and we know that 18 days has been earned in February. Well, what about January? Well, January would have been booked in January, so we don't need to worry about that. We only need to worry about February. So 290, um, let's move it over here. 290 multiplied it by 18 days should give us $5,220. So now we gotta book that adjusting entry. The adjusting entry would be an increase to the revenue and an increase to an asset. What asset? Accounts receivable. So if we're gonna increase accounts receivable and it's an asset, then we're going to debit it for 5,220. So accounts receivable, for 5,220. What's our credit? Well, our offsetting credit would have been the revenue that we've earned because we've earned it. We provided the service to the customer. So we're gonna put service revenue in the amount of 5,220. So that would be our adjusting entry. Now, taking it one step further, so because good pra practice makes perfect, uh, what would be the entry on March 20th when we actually pay, when the client pays us for the services that we rendered. Well, we're gonna receive cash. How much cash are we gonna receive? We're gonna receive 11,200. If you said 5,220, you're partially right, but you're missing the January portion. So we're actually gonna receive all of the cash. So in this case, we're gonna debit cash for 11,600, and we're gonna credit accounts receivable for 11,600 as well. So this is one of those instances where when we do the adjusting entry, the adjusting entry may not necessarily match monetarily with the original book of entry. This is the case because uh, what happened to the additional looks like about $5,000 ish. Well, that was earned in January. So that accounts receivable would have been booked in January. That revenue would have been booked in January. So at the end of these, two periods, we would have earned 11,600. We would also have a receivable for 11,600 as well. So that's why there is a difference here. All right, moving on to journal entry number three in this first example. On January 29th, company A agreed to provide services to the rat race. However, since they are new, company A requires payment up front in order to ensure the company A is uh, pays all of its services that are rendered. Uh, the terms of the agreement requires company A to provide services to, uh, to the rat race starting on February 8th and ending on March 9th. That's a 30-day period. 
or $3,600. Prepare the adjusting entry for the revenue earned in February. So in this case, unlike the last case, it says here that the rat race had to put up $3,600 on day one. Why? Because they haven't established credit with us. We don't know if they are good for their money or not. Therefore, we're going to say, hey, give us a deposit here or give us this $3,600 up front. Then we'll perform the services. If you are a good customer over the period of time, then we might give you terms and, and let them pay after the services have been rendered. But that's not the case here. So we have our original book of entry. The original book of entry would have been the exchange that happened with the cash on... January 29th. And so in this case, what did we receive? Well, we received cash. So we received cash in the amount of 3600. 3, and what did we give up? Well, we gave up a promise, a promise to perform. In that case, we call that an accounts payable. So accounts payable. Actually, I'm going to switch that. We're going to use deferred revenue. I was thinking accounts payable, but that's probably not right. Deferred revenue. Deferred revenue is when we're deferring the revenue. We could have used accounts payable. I was just thinking about the last example anyways. $3,600 for deferred revenue. Don't copy what I just did there. All right, deferred revenue. All right, so then what would the adjusting entry be? Well, the adjusting entry would be the amount that was earned in February needs to be booked in February rather than uh, waiting until later on. So we have to make an adjusting entry for that, uh, the amount that we've earned in February. So 30 days uh, is the contract. The question is, is how much, uh, how many days have gone by in the month of February? So we've got fe uh, 21 days, if I'm correct here, uh, February 28th through February, sorry, February 8th to the February 28th would give us 21 days. So 21 days is how much we need to accrue for or we need to book revenues for. Um, in this case, uh, we've got 30 days at 3,600 bucks. So the question is how do we figure out how many days, how much money do we earn per day? We take the total amount of the contract and we divide it by the number of days. So in this case, we have a contract for 3,600 over 30 days, that gives us $120 per day. So we'll earn $120 per day. Well, in February, we had 21 days starting on February 8th, going all the way through February 28th. So that's gonna give us 21 days. So 120 times 21 days gives us 2520. So that's how much we've earned. So if we earned it, we no longer owe it. So we have to decrease our deferred revenues by the 2520 and book them into revenues. So if we notice here, deferred revenues is a credit. To reverse it, we need to debit. So we'll debit deferred revenues for 2520 and we'll credit sales uh, service revenues for 2520 as well. So that's what journal entry three would look like. Again, cash payment is made before. Time has gone by. We have now earned some of that revenues that we deferred. So we're gonna book the revenue and extinguish the liability that we owe to the customer in the form of a deferred revenue. All right, moving into the last journal entry here in example one, company A has a pretty good credit with their utility company. Company A incurs utility expense at a rate of $224 per day. The month of February, uh, the month of February for 20X2 has 28 days. Payment is made 15 days after the month end. So now we need to prepare the adjusting entry. So we've incurred the expense, but we haven't paid for it. So at the end of the month, even though we haven't paid for it, or even if we are going to pay for it in two weeks, we still need to book the expense in the proper period. What period did we incur them? We incurred the electricity expense in February. So to do this, we'll take 224. We'll multiply it by 28 days. That's going to give us $5,472 in utility expenses. So because we've incurred it, we've incurred an expense, we're going to have to book an expense. Increases in expenses are a debit. So we'll debit utilities expense for $54.72. And we'll credit utilities 
payable for the same amount. Now, if you're a little confused on why I use payable instead of maybe accounts payable, accounts payable usually has to do with um, like inventory or things that we would do on a normal basis to generate revenue. Although utilities are, uh, are an important part of generating revenue, they are in indirect costs, usually not a direct cost. So that's why I put utilities payable. So um, you could put accounts payable and you're totally fine there, but I get, want you to get comfortable in using these different types of payables as you go through this course. So that's why I'm using utilities payable here instead of an accounts payable. All right, what would the offset be? The offset would be the cash that's paid 15 days later. Well, we're going to have to pay cash. So paying cash, we would credit cash, decreasing cash in the amount of 54.72. And then we would credit uh, debit what? Well, we would debit the extinguishment of the liability. The liability was established when we booked the expense. So in this case, we're going to debit utilities payable for $5,472. So that's what that entry would look like. The cash comes after the incurrence of the actual expense. So that is our first example on adjusting entries. I hope that made sense as you go through that example. And again, um, adjusting entries can be hard for students because uh, we have to try to figure out how much revenues and expenses were incurred or earned, uh, but at the same time, we don't actually have any documentation. We don't have any source documents of the actual exchange. It's almost like a delay of an exchange because one part of the exchange happens before and the other part, part happens later on. And so it becomes a little complicated. So hopefully by going through it one more time, you have a better understanding on how adjusting entries are completed. Know that in these examples, there are a little bit tougher uh, for on purpose uh, but what we did was you had to you were required to actually do the calculations to get to the adjustment amount and so instead of just giving you the number we actually had to walk you through it so remember as you're looking at the uh, looking at questions to think about okay what is it asking me what is it giving me and then how am I going to how am I going to get to where I need to get to from a journal entry standpoint? So hope you enjoyed this example and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw, share it with someone. And if you wanna help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.